Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. This review covers the Revell first generation Ford Bronco kit. This is 125 scale. Model kit number 854320. Ford Bronco was Ford's first compact SUV and was nearly untouched until 77 after coming out in 1966. It had a 92 inch wheelbase, four wheel drive, and a straight six or a V8. This kit comes with the V8 version, small block, and it is a brand new release for the first generation Bronco. It's a skill level 5 for modelers aged 14 and up. And there's 137 pieces molded in white, chrome plated, clear, metal axle pins, and soft black tires complete the kit along with some colorful water slide decals. The engine for this kit, as I mentioned, is the small block V8 and this kit is pretty well designed, requiring only a few blemishes that need to be addressed. This is the kit's contents and here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours, but as always use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. We start the uh, construction with the engine and as you can see the arrow here points to a missing locator pin which probably was just broken off during packaging. It's just an easy fix to uh, glue the engine halves together and just make sure they align uh, flush. Mostly we'll be using just some good old orange tube glue from testers for this and, and the testers uh, enamel paints in the bottle. Now you can go ahead and add the left and right cylinder heads and the oil pan assembly there and also the uh, left and right rockers, uh, rocker covers and the stock intake manifold and paint those testers gloss dark blue you can highlight the pigtail with aluminum there too. Uh, gather these parts for the front of the engine and seems to be some confusion with the instructions. Uh, it appears like the lower radiator hose is actually the upper and um, the left manifold uh, is also actually the right manifold. But anyway, uh, gather those parts and the, um, the engine front and the fan are painted dark blue and the upper radiator hose uh, and the fan belt are painted uh, flat black and the starter is a semi-gloss black. The exhaust manifolds are painted tester steel and the engine front starter and right exhaust manifold can be attached to the engine assembly and then the fan belt and lower radiator hose are attached to the engine front and finally the fan is attached to the fan belt. Gather these parts and paint the left exhaust manifold uh, steel also. The oil filter is painted uh, with the Model Masters acrylic semi-gloss white and decal number four is applied to the oil filter. The ignition is semi-gloss black and detailed with some tester silver and the stock carburetor is painted aluminum. The distributor is semi-gloss black and attached and the exhaust manifold and oil filter are then attached to the M engine assembly. The ignition, stock carburetor and distributor are now attached to the stock intake manifold. As you can see in the photos here, there are three different areas that have copyright logo script on them. Um, it's really only necessary to remove the logos from the um, fuel tank because that's the only part that gets seen after the kit is finished. So just uh, remove those uh, with some sandpaper and uh, some a sharp hobby knife. Paint the frame tester semi-gloss black and after it's fully cured, uh, install the engine assembly into the frame on its mounts. Just add it to the locating pin pins and glue it into place. Paint the trailer hitch uh, semi-gloss black and attach that to the frame over the fuel tank. The left and right exhaust pipes are painted tester steel and then the left exhaust pipe is attached to the frame along with the left exhaust manifold. The right exhaust pipe is attached to the frame also with the right exhaust manifold. Paint the two uh, leaf springs in the rear um, a semi-gloss black and then uh, after they've dried install those onto the frame assembly and then assemble the uh, the transfer case the front and the rear and then the transfer case uh, is painted testers aluminum. After that's dried the uh, 
uh, transfer case can be attached to the transmission on the engine assembly. Attach the rear axle cover to the rear axle and then the rear axle assembly and the rear drive shaft are painted uh, texture semi-gloss black. The rear axle assembly is then attached to both rear leaf springs and the rear drive shaft is attached to the transfer case and the rear axle. A molding error became evident at this point um, on the frame that I hadn't noticed before but one of the holes for the skid plate is filled in and this can be corrected just by drilling out the hole by using either a small uh, drill or, or even uh, the tip of a sharp blade. Uh, but use the other hole uh, on the other side there to uh, find the correct size and drill that hole in the same location on the other side of the frame. Pull out the skid plate and the shocks and paint the skid plate uh, semi-gloss black. The four rear shocks are painted uh, testers gloss yellow. Then the skid plate is attached to the frame protecting the transfer case and the rear shocks are attached to the frame and the rear axle, two on the left and two on the right. Find the uh, left and the right front control arms and paint those semi-gloss black. Then uh, attach those to the frame assembly. Now gather up the front shocks, um, the uh, right front and left front shock and uh, both front shocks there and they're painted testers gloss yellow also. And the, fright, uh, the front shock and the left front shock uh, are attached to the left front control arm and then to the frame. And then a, uh, one of the front shocks and the right front shock are attached to the right front control arm as well and then to the frame. Locate the parts shown here which is the front axle cover and the front axle and then attach those two together and the front axle assembly drive shaft and left control arm plate and right control arm plate are then painted testers semi-gloss black. The front axle assembly is then attached to the right front control arm and the left front control arm. And then the left control arm plate is attached to the left front control arm trapping the front axle into place. The con right control arm plate is then attached to the right front control arm trapping that front axle section into place. And remember, you have a protruding part there of the control arm plates that are facing the front when they are installed. Front, uh, paint the uh, front torsion bar and steering gear box here a semi-gloss black. And then the front torsion bar is attached to the right side of the front axle and the bottom left of the frame. And the steering gear box is attached to the left side of the frame. Paint the center drag link and the tie rod uh, semi-gloss black. And the drag link is attached to the frame and the steering gear box. I, I suggest some super glue for these smaller parts for strength. Then the tie rod is attached to both ends of the front axle and the drag link. Sticking with the uh, stock build for my version, uh, I located the uh, two front stock uh, wheels and the rear stock wheels and those are painted uh, semi-gloss white. And then the four disc brakes are painted tester steel. The stock front wheels are detailed with some testers gloss red uh, and the hubs and the metal axle pins can be seen better uh, that way. The stock front wheel is installed into the tire and the front hub cap is attached to the front of the stock front wheel. The metal axle pins installed into the disc brake and the disc brake assembly is attached to the back of the stock front wheel. This is done twice for the front tires. The rear stock wheel is then installed into the tire and the rear hub cap is attached to the front of the rear stock wheel. The metal axle pin then is installed into the disc brake and the disc brake assembly is attached to the back of the rear stock wheels. This is done twice for the rear tires. The tire assemblies are then installed onto the frame assembly. Use some super glue here to secure the ends of the metal axle pins into the uh, holes for the front and rear axles. Gather up the floor pan and uh, spray that uh, semi-gloss black. And then uh, also uh, assemble the frame for the rear seat and paint that black too. Then uh, the seat portions including the armrests are uh, semi-gloss white. Now assemble the uh, parts for the rear seat uh, around the frame and then attach the frame to the floor pan. 
I use the seat insert uh, decals number 23 and 24. Uh, 23 going on to the base and 24 is applied to the seat back. If you're going to install the roll cage, uh, you'll need to examine this uh, floor pan here and open up the holes uh, uh, that are used to install it. So uh, two of them are indicated here by the arrows shown. Get out the parts for the roll bar, bar here, shown here and paint that semi-gloss black. And the roll bar is installed onto the interior floor uh, the, with the roll bar support being attached to the floor and one roll bar on each side of the rear seat. Pull out the parts for the front seat shown here and assemble those two halves together and paint that uh, semi-gloss white. And use I used the decals again, 21 and 22, applied to the front seat inserts. And then the assemblies are installed onto the interior floor and the shifter is painted tester silver and detailed with some semi-gloss black before being attached to the interior floor too. Paint the interior uh, door panels white and then uh, mask that off after it's dried and paint the rest of it light blue like the rear panel shown here. And then apply uh, a decal number 19 to the right interior side and decal number 20 to the left interior side. Then install the panels to the interior floor assembly. Get these parts out and paint the dashboard uh, white except for uh, the top deck there which is painted a semi-gloss black as well as the pedals, the steering column, and the steering wheel. Now then you apply decals uh, to the dashboard numbers uh, 8, 16, and 17. And the, the steering column gets detailed with a little silver paint uh, before being installed into the dashboard and the steering wheel is attached to the steering column and then decal 18 is applied to the steering wheel and the pedals are then uh, installed in the back of the dashboard assembly. Now prep the body by sanding off the mi mild uh, mold lines and uh, give it a nice overall uh, sanding with some real fine sandpaper and then a coat of primer followed by your color coat of choice. Um, I used a, uh, a light blue from testers through the um, airbrush and I trimmed out uh, the interior of the engine bay with some uh, testers uh, black, semi-gloss black and some appointments there are red with silver as well. The dashboard assembly then is attached to the interior floor assembly and install the interior floor assembly into the body assembly. Test fit your body uh, to apply that to, to the frame now and scrape off contact points and glue that into place. And then uh, apply decal 5 and 6 to the battery which is molded into the in engine bay. Gather up the radiator, the radiator wall and fan shroud and paint those semi-gloss black. And then uh, paint the, um, the upper radiator hose which is called the lower radiator hose in the instructions a flat black. Then the radiator is now attached to the radiator wall, the fan shroud is attached to the radiator, and the radiator wall is installed into the body assembly. The uh, upper radiator hose is then attached to the radiator and to the stock intake manifold. Get out the stock air cleaner and the um, master cylinder and uh, there's options for the stock air cleaner. I chose the uh, 1973 option uh, which is um, uh, one where you actually modify it by cutting off a little piece and moving it a few degrees. Um, the instructions there in step 21 are a good template for the alteration. Now the stock air cleaner is painted testers uh, gloss dark blue and then attached to the stock carburetor. The brake uh, master cylinder is painted steel and it's attached to the firewall of the body assembly. Get out the front lenses, uh, the grill and the bumper and the headlights they're installed into the grill with some uh, clear part cement or white glue and the front turn signals are painted a uh, model master turn signal amber and then the front turn signals are attached to the grill assembly with some white glue or, or uh, clear part cement and finally the grill assembly is attached to the body assembly once in place uh, make sure that uh, it's all straight and put the front bumper uh, onto the frame assembly too the rear license plate uh, bra uh, you know, holder and the upper and lower carrier brackets are sprayed body color. And then the tail lights and reflectors are detailed with some uh, 
clear red acrylic or um, enamel and the tail lights and the reflector and the rear license plate are then attached to the body assembly. Now the upper carrier bracket is attached to the body assembly above the right tail light and the lower one is attached to the body below the right tail light. Gather these parts for the next step and assemble the two halves of the spare tire cover. Uh, I painted it uh, a perfect match universal white by Duplicolor and the spare tire carrier is painted semi-gloss black. Now attach the spare tire assembly to the spare tire carrier and then the carrier assembly is attached to the upper and lower carrier brackets. Uh, don't use any glue here, just snap it into place uh, so that it will remain operational and can be swung out like the real car. Uh, then attach the right rear reflector to the lower carrier bracket. Finally, attach the rear bumper to the frame. Apply decal number 28 to the tailgate, and that's the, uh, the Ford logo. Paint the windshield frame light blue and let that dry. And then gra gather these parts and note that uh, there are door windows for this kit, but uh, I thought it looked better without them for my model. Um, now, the rear view mirror, the windshield, and both windshield wipers are attached to the windshield frame with some clear part cement uh, or white glue and both the gas caps, the left and right door handles, the windshield frame then are attached to the body assembly. Paint the removable hard top your choice of color. In this case I used that uh, Duplicolor Perfect Match Universal White. Then install the windows, uh, the right, left and the rear, and the lift uh, gate handle onto the top with some white glue or clear part cement. Paint the hood uh, body color, let it dry, and then uh, install the hood into the hinges on the body and also the top uh, without using glue. These are um, operational parts. And then attach the side mirror to the mirror stem and then glue the side mirror assembly to the body. Now you can apply all the decals to the exterior of the body and uh, attach the license plate and also the, even the four on the hubcaps. Uh, the, uh, the front fender turn signals then and the rear side markers are first given a coat of uh, tester silver paint. Then uh, detail the front ones with some uh, turn signal amber metallic and the rears with some stoplight red clear uh, paint for emphasis. There you have it. As you'd expect these are uh, clean parts because this is a new mold. Uh, all the parts fit together well. There was no real warpage issues. Uh, one small detail was filled in on the frame and that was about it. Um, even the mold lines of course are crisp and minimal. You're going to love putting this kit together uh, and it is the base for a number of, of new uh, iterations that I'm sure you'll build or will come out from Ravel but it's a great kit and you're going to love it. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks!